Welcome to this final part in this e-lecture on circadian rhythms. This part will be about chronotherapy. My name is Bjorn Olav Hall and I'm from the University of Copenhagen. So we can ask again, what is chronotherapy? Well, chronotherapy is defined as the use of circadian or any other rhythmic cycle in the application of a therapy. So in essence, chronotherapy is about the intervention time where it is most effective and or least harmful to apply uh, a medication or some kind of other drug. And we can ask why do we need to have chronotherapy? Well, as every cycle has its peaks and its throws, there will be certain time points where it's most beneficial to apply a drug. And because we know that drug metabolizing processes are under circadian control, and also the cell cycle is under circadian control, we can apply drugs where we know that the effect will be greatest. We can reduce the side effects and possibly we can decrease the cost of medication. In our first example, we will look at cancer chemotherapy. We know that chemotherapy is limited by the toxicity to healthy tissue. Many anti-cancer drugs target specific phases in the cell cycle. For instance, the S phase where new DNA is being synthesized. We also know that cancer cells often escape the cell cycle checkpoints and limitations in order to grow uh, indefinitely. And this can be exploited because we know that healthy uh, cells, they have a, a cell cycle that has a circadian component. Thus, if we restrict ourselves to do the, our medication, our intervention in, uh, in the phases where we don't, for instance, synthesize DNA, then we don't target the healthy cells, but only cancer cells. In colorectal cancer, an often applied chemotherapeutic agent is 5-fluorouracil, which blocks the S phase of the cell cycle. This drug has a half time in the blood of approximately 15 minutes. And in this graph here, you can see the concentration of 5 fluorouracil in cancer patients that received constant infusion of this drug across five days. Note the very pronounced circadian oscillations upon application of 5 fluorouracil. The shape of the oscillations can be, can be modified somewhat by applications of other drugs as well. It is known that the circadian clock controls the cell cycle via the BML1 clock protein dimer activation of a protein called B1, which inhibits the transition from the G2 to the M phase of healthy cells. Assuming that cancer cells have escaped this inhibition, we can now apply a cell automata model to analyze the optimal application time of 5 fluorouracil. The upper panel shows three diagrams where we have the right timing, wrong timing or constant infusion of 5 fluorouracil. And each diagram shows the fraction of healthy cells that are in S phase with respect to time. And as you can see here in the first diagram, if we apply our drug 5 fluorouracil between the phases where the healthy drugs are in S phase, no healthy cells will be affected by the drug and we have less side effects and we have uh, uh, more 5 fluorouracil available to target cancer cells. If we have a wrong timing where some of the 5 fluorouracil injection actually coincides with the period where we have cells, healthy cells in S phase, you can see that the 
that the amount of cells drops because healthy cells simply die. And finally, if you have a constant infusion of 5 uracil, you see the same thing. You will al always hit some of the healthy cells that are in S phase, but not to uh, uh, the same extent as in, in the wrong timing situation. So we can see that chronotherapy works if 5 uracil is administered between the S phases of healthy cells, but that implies that we know the timing of, uh, of the S phase. We also need to assure that healthy cells are perfectly synchronized. And finally, we need to know that the half time of our drug is short enough such that we can apply it and we know that it is fully uh, metabolized uh, at the onset of the next S phase. But in fact, this has been tried out in clinical trial evaluations. And what was observed was that 70 per, there was a 70% increase in anti-tumor responses, and you had a strong reduction of side effects in, uh, in colon cancer patients. This shows you that chronotherapy can actually work in practice, but it entails a lot of knowledge about the individual person and also about uh, the drug that you are applying. In the second example of chronotherapy, we will look at cyclophosphamid, which is abbreviated CY. Cyclophosphamid is a toxic alkylating agent with a strong circadian response, which means it is amenable to chronotherapy. As shown in this diagram, here is the survival rate of wild type mice after they were injected with cyclophosphamid at different time points during the day. The mice were injected with the same dose of cyclophosphamid, but at different sidekeeper times, which is abbreviated ZT. And ZT0 corresponds to the beginning of the light phase of the daily cycle. And as you can see, animals who were injected at sidekeeper 10 to sidekeeper 14, they had a much higher survival rate compared to the litter mice who were injected between ZT22 and ZT02. Next, the researchers engineered genetically modified mice where they knocked out either the clock gene or the BML1 gene. And as you can see, in both instances, uh, knockout mice displayed uh, a decreased survival and decreased body weight. However, if they knocked out cry, the cry gene, it was associated with an increased survival and increased body weight. And that was irrespective of the time point with which they injected CY. So as we can see, knockout of clock BML1 or cry destroys the circadian rhythm. However, BML, uh, the, the clock BML1 transcription is maximally active in the cry knockout because now the, the cry pair, pair, uh, protein dimer cannot inhibit the transcription of clock BML. And somehow this is associated with increased survival. Now, as we can see, you have a clear circadian component, component but the detailed mechanism again is uh, to this day unknown. The take home messages for this final part on chronotherapy are the following. Chronotherapy may enhance in effectiveness of drug application and it may also reduce the side effects. However, we need to do more research, especially in the individual chronotypes but also we need to know more about the mechanisms that relate the core circadian oscillator to the physiological functions that show uh, circadian rhythms. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the professional and technical assistance from Olga Sosnovtseva from the
Department of Biomedical Sciences here at the University of Copenhagen. Thank you.